Okay, I think we should be live. So this is gonna be an interesting case to work on today. Uh, let me know if you can hear and see everything okay and uh, I'll walk you through the case once, once people can confirm. Uh, but yeah, the case is right there. It's pretty cool. It's called the Segotep EDI. And we found this a while ago, but only recently got it in. Uh, it is mini ITX or micro ATX. And um, the, uh, the build we're going to do is a mini ITX build just to make sure we have extra space because I haven't used this particular case before. And uh, Patrick's going to join me a little bit later to help with the build. But because we haven't built with it and because it's kind of weirdly shaped, we're going with mini ITX just to make sure we don't run into any uh, issues fitting like a micro ATX board, even though it's technically on the supported list. So that's the case. Looks like people say they can see and hear things okay. Uh, cool. All right. So I guess I will walk around through this. Let me, let me tweet out that we're live. We are live with a really weird case. Okay, cool. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. So, yeah, I know it's, it's not 60 FPS. Uh, okay, cool. I think we're good. There's one person who thinks it's really funny to say no sound, but everybody else can hear, so I guess maybe unmute it. Uh, I guess that's not, not, not going to help, is it? All right, so the case, I think... Someone says, oh man, this looks so dumb, but I want one anyway. That, those feelings were exactly mine when we got this. So first thought when we got this in was, if this were a little bit more beige, it could have been the away shuttle in, uh, in TNG, I think. It's not too far from it. So the enclosure is, let's see, let me pull some. Actually, you know what? Before I pull panels off, let's walk through it externally. Enclosure is, is certainly a very large uh, mini ITX or micro ATX box, but it's obviously done all for looks. And unfortunately, this uh, acrylic dome does not open up. I really wished it did. So like, ideally, I think you would push this button here, which is just a, that's a power button. Oh, it's stuck again. This power button, uh, this is a quality issue on the case that we discovered early. So I haven't built in this yet, but power button gets stuck sometimes. I think it's because the paint uh, is too thick. And so it has trouble returning sometimes. But that's power button. I really wish it were like an eject button to open up this dome and, um, and give the thing some airflow. But if you're wondering about the source of air, there is an option to do some intake down here. So there's space for maybe a 120, depending on how the power supply fits. The IO is right here. And then right there is a, um, like a projector LED with some hot glue on it. So that projects onto the surface. I think this case is $200. We bought it from Uniway Computers. Uh, I think they're a Canadian PC parts retailer. And um, I don't think they shipped to the US when we first tried to order. So they, they helped us out when we emailed them directly. The case is like 200 bucks. And uh, it's been around since about 2019. The manufacturer date on this thing is 2019. So. Someone says macro mini ITX. That that is probably accurate. Uh, I'm just reading some of the comments because I really want to see what people think of this. So let, let me read some of these while we while people filter in. So a seven shore said looks like a ship from the nine from a '90s video game. I can definitely see that. It, I mean, this looks like the kind of thing that Blizzard might have thought would be suitable for the for Terran and Starcraft or something. Uh, let's see. Someone says it's a Daft Punk helmet. Too soon. Uh, <laughs> if it had been beige, it might have been the first case to compliment Noctua, someone said. And then someone else said, looks like an escape pod from Star Trek Next Generation. Excellent. Okay, so we're all on the same page. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, so... I, Buzz Lightyear comments, Daft Punk Memorial PC. <laughs> uh, it'll match my race car bed perfectly, the Anvil Man said. <laughs> All right, I, I'm, uh, I'm happy with these comments. I think everybody's on the same page with this thing. <laughs> so let's take a look at this and 
and see what it's sort of made of and how it's built. I already showed the bottom with I.O. and that projector LED. So it's, it comes apart uh, via this panel first. There's some screws that hold a few things in, but I've taken those out. Just two screws. So this pulls out. It gets a little stuck in this corner, we've noticed. And I'm not at a great angle either, but uh, this pulls out. So there's the rear panel. And then to get the top of this removed, unfortunately, it's all held in with alligator clips. And so that means we, we want to limit how many times we're taking this apart because those alligator clips don't normally survive too many cycles. But the method that Patrick came up with was to push from the inside at the same time as pulling. And then it's not too hard to remove. But you can see the alligator clips there. Uh, this one actually has already been damaged, unfortunately, but that's the nature of alligator clips. So one, two, three, four, five, six of those. Uh, the inside, it's technically got some dust filters, I guess you could call them that. Let me get this down on the table where you can see it better. So there's a little bit of ventilation here where if you look at the front or the top, uh, aligns with this. If you could fit a small tower cooler in there, that would be kind of interesting. <laughs> um, don't know that it would cool particularly well, but it could technically pull a very tiny amount of air from that spot. There's some holes on the sides. No fans aligned with these, so this would only really do anything for you if you're negative pressure and the air is coming in through wherever it can. Hole back here with a, a grill on it and not particularly uh, efficient in terms of the the amount of airflow potential in the design in general, but you know that's where it's located if you were worried about it. Technically, this dome acrylic can be removed without, I think, too much effort. I haven't tried it yet, but you can see the clips like right there, right there, right there, and those all press, and then it should just drop out. I think that's everything on this side, nothing too interesting. So let me, let me set this side panel down, or front top panel, whatever it is. Functional hood scoop, yeah, yeah, you could definitely, if you expanded it a bit. Someone says, more functional, more, more functional vents than on a Civic Type R. I'm not familiar with the Civic Type R specifically, but I appreciate, I appreciate the, the intent of the joke. Uh, so rear fans, I think these are 80 mil, there's two of them. These are pre-installed in the case, they're included with it. And then, uh, then you have the actual motherboard tray, this forward part of the tray can be removed separately, some SSD sleds, things like that. So this is what we're going to be building in today and check on uh, chat and everything. Is this live? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if, um, I guess during the stream today, if you want to pick up one of our mouse mats from the store, on store.cameraaccess.net. They are in stock and shipping now. So that's this mouse mat right here. We have them in stock. These have been super popular. And uh, if you buy one from the store today during the stream, then Patrick and I will be signing all of the ones bought during the stream. No extra charge on that or anything. We're just, if you buy it during the stream, then our way of saying thanks is we're both gonna sign it up there in the top corner. So uh, go to store.cameraaccess.net if you wanna pick one up. And I'll also read some of the super chats and then we'll get building. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> looks like something you would send down a ski slope. Yeah, so this is actually, we, we were sad that we didn't get, um, didn't get like a snow day anytime while this has been here because it would have been great to film it. Because uh, I, I mean, if you look at the, so the, the feet on this thing, I think they might be aluminum. I'm not positive, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's aluminum. And, uh, Honestly, it looks like the most expensive part on the entire case. That's interesting. There's like a screw hole under this um, under this rubber, uh, whatever you want to call it. I just grip, I guess. A couple screw holes in there. But anyway, yeah, the the, the actual like supports on this are pretty good quality. Pre-recorded, confirmed. No, is that windshield transparent? Great question. So. We'll get a shot of it for you, but not really is the answer. 
Uh, I think that it's um, it's it's a window enough that if you have LEDs in there, they'll show through, and you'll get some illumination on the dome of this. Like if you have a, a blue LED or something, is what they show in their photos. But uh, that's probably about all you get. You're not really going to be able to see the parts, and that's why I really want this to be able to open because then you could solve some of the airflow concerns and also be able to see stuff. How much was the case? $200. Uh, and I have a link to it in the description. We bought it from a, um, uh, I think, Canadian retailer called Uniway Computers. Okay, let me read some of these super chats. So we had a message from Robert Mal, $10. What starship is this shuttlecraft from? You know, that's, you know, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. I don't know if it's like a 1701-B or, or what, but that's kind of the... That's what I think it's from. Uh, Bazinga's in chat. Good to see you, Bazinga. Uh, Nost Nostra Famous, <laughs> $5, says, in Bill Nye style, Steve, Steve, Steve. All right. Uh, Leviathan Prim, good to see you back. $5, said, hello, GN. That case looks epic. You know, this case seems so far to have mixed response. A couple of people in chat have said they, uh, they really want to work on it. Someone else said it looks like a toilet. Uh, actually, a few people have said that. And a lot of people have said that it looks like a spaceship. Kelrune, $20. Finally got my 2020 shirt after weather delays. Thanks again. Well, thanks for picking it up. And I'm uh, glad it got there, finally. Th thank you for grabbing one. Timothy Gregg, $10, no message. Uh, Alexandra Stefanica says, uh, want to compete for the most powerful drone. You know, I think I can turn this into a drone if we just put some knock to a server 3,000 RPM fans in the bottom. Maybe two of them should do the trick, and we, we might get some, some lift from that. Next one. Todd says, thank you for all the diligent reviews. We appreciate your objectivity and no filter approach. Well, thank you for, uh, for watching them. I think there's been a lot of... There's been a lot more need for no filter approach in the last few weeks than ever before. Uh, Brumatic says, is this your new daily driver? I expect to see a picture of you behind your desk with this behemoth rigged up. This, uh, this I, I think, honestly, I think it might be cooler to mod it into more of a literal driver. Like if you build a an RC car out of it, I'm not sure how good it is as a computer, but. Uh, but we'll we'll see we'll see if it's suitable enough to use for anything after we're done with it. I think we're we're gonna do probably a full review of this case after it's all built and do the a little bit of thermals and get Patrick's build notes on it stuff like that. But uh, just because it's kind of fun and different. Uh, let's, let me do two more of these super chats. Big Al two sixty eight. Good to see you back. Sent ten dollars. Said, is this going to be CEO Snowflake's new ride? That's probably more appropriate. I think Snowflake would probably try and climb in here if she could find a way in. Uh, Fantas Mori says, uh, careful, be aware that you will give that spaceship hyperdrive capabilities when you place a GPU inside of it, as demonstrated in the 3060 video. Yes, they, they do warp in and out of existence. That is actually a feature of the RTX 30 series, uh, depending on when you're trying to buy one. Okay, so I think we've gone through the basics. Uh, let me invite Patrick out here to help me with assembly, and we're going to build this thing. And um, it, it really should be pretty straightforward, I hope, as far as ITX boxes go, because this one is pretty large. But give me one second. Uh, Andrew, I guess if you can grab the other mic, if you're ready, pa Patrick. <clears throat> so and we're going to work on uh, building this. So our, our components we've selected are pretty straightforward. So Asus is sponsoring the stream, as listed in the description, if you're interested in their... Uh, their motherboards. The one we're going to be using is a B550 Strix ITX board. So Asus is the stream sponsor with that. And they also have an X570 Strix gaming ITX board that uh, I think is in stock as well. That's probably the one I've linked in the description. So we're going with ITX because we could, like I said earlier, just to repeat it because more people have joined. We could do micro ATX in this case, but uh, I'm going to really regret this later if I forget to put these back inside the case before I mount the motherboard. 
But um, the problem I had with it, just to be clear, was uh, just concern about fitment in general. So micro ATX pushes out to about here. And, and uh, technically there's space, but because this dome's like that, we, we lose height at the edges. And I'm a little worried about what that means for coolers and GPU compatibility. But um, Andrew, you can hear Patrick. Hello. Andrew, can you hear me? OK, good. <laughs> OK. So Patrick's joining me for this. And uh, I don't know. Do you want to share your initial thoughts? I've already talked about what I think about it. So um, I, <laughs> it seems very divisive. Uh, <laughs> some people were asking you where they could buy it, and some people were asking if they could throw uh, it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I heard the toilet comments. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's strange, definitely. I wish more of these vents were connected to um, actual fan intakes. There's a single fan mount inside the case. And I, well, other than the two 80 mil fans that are already in it. And I think if we have an issue with the case, that may be it. Yeah. Uh, thermally. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. I think you were talking about tower coolers earlier. Um, we have tried to select parts that will work with this case, and I don't think basically any tower coolers with a mini ITX board will work because yeah. they're very close to this um, kind of beveled edge here. Maybe yeah. if you had an, a micro um, ATX board. We have small tower coolers, but uh, mm -hmm. they, it's so it's too close of a fit, I think, for a lot of them. Yeah. And one of the things, because we're streaming this too, we don't really want to don't want to like build it all and then find out it doesn't fit at the end. <laughs> so yeah. We're probably using, I think, the included AMD cooler or one of them, and we're going to be building with a 3700X. Uh, we are the reason for that part selection. So we, we're choosing the parts based on we we don't have a standardized uh, case testing bench for mini ITX or micro ATX, and. The part selection is to create enough heat that we have a good test subject for this case, but not so much heat that it's just going to be throttled in all of the benchmarks. So we're using, I think we went with a 3070, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 3070 um, specifically chose the FE model because we were, I think you tried to fit a different one. Um, the, uh, I think the only other 3070 we had free was um, a really huge Strix one. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, this case actually will fit very large graphics cards. Um, but only in one direction. Well, yeah, I mean, it's pretty long this way. It's just that that card in particular was so large that this uh, shroud started to bump into it at the end. So was it, was it hitting it uh, this direction or this direction? Mm -mm. It, okay. was, uh, it was fine until right about this corner right here okay. because the shroud starts to come down and limit clearance. Right. And you pulled this out, I guess, for the bottom, maybe? Yeah. Um, that, this is just the 120 fan that we had lying around. So I was thinking maybe we could do an intake right here. And right. There is, Steve pointed out earlier, there's a big vent in the bottom of the case for the power supply, but it extends beyond the power supply, so it should be able to let some air in. Yeah. Um, let's see. I guess we can, uh, I guess we can start taking right. apart some of the chassis. And so, like, I wanted to take out this front section okay. um, to give us some more clearance and maybe put a fan in and show people how it's assembled. I didn't point it out earlier, but there's that power button that I was showing at the beginning of the stream, where the actual plastic button on top, which is over here, gets stuck sometimes in there. So I think it's probably the paint is too thick on there, and it gets caught, and it doesn't return. But it's just a cheap sprain. So, so that's power button. Uh, unfortunately, other than looking kind of interesting, there aren't any, like, functional features that are cool. I guess you can maybe count the projection LED on the bottom. Yeah, there's a projection LED on the bottom, and there's these two LEDs um, here that should light up around the power button. And I think those are all Do we run know off of a Molex. Is the, the LED on the bottom, I guess, just has some kind of filter installed in it or something to shape the light? Like, do we know what it looks like when it projects? Uh, no, their product listing for, uh, I, I'm sure I could have found it if I looked around on other pages, but Sagotep's own product page for this case had a picture of the case, and that was about it. Okay. 
Yeah, that's. But it, it looks like one of those um, things that projects down on the desk, like a ASUS monitor. It's like something you would find on ThinkGeek like 15 years ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> They're making a comeback. ThinkGeek, I think, is owned by GameStop. So they, that means they can only go up. <laughs> they like. There's they only. The Minecraft license, right? Like, they, oh, yeah, something? I guess so. Or, no, that was a different. Any, anyway. <laughs> Minecraft license is a money printing license. We had someone earlier saying, uh, and it wasn't necessarily a bad suggestion either. So they had a specific um, heavy CPU workload involving Minecraft that they thought would be suitable for CPU reviews. I looked into it, and it is genuinely very CPU heavy. I don't know that we'll be adding it for this round, but you know, I guess I, I don't know at what point. At what point are you benchmarking the programming? Yeah. You know, versus the product. I guess it's still valid because it is that is the game. Mm -hmm. right? Well, they were specifically asking about uh, Java Edition, I think. So yeah. It's been a long time since I've played Minecraft. Um, but did you point out the the legs on this? They're like a little bit. Uh, Feel free to. Somebody was saying they thought the case was made out of aluminum, and the case is definitely not. But these legs are, as far as we can tell, just solid aluminum, and it's a lot of aluminum. <laughs> so yeah, somebody asked where the two hundred dollars went. That's uh, that's uh, some chunk of it is these giant aluminum legs that yeah. are one piece. I think yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean the aluminum. Work on the uh, like the structure at the bottom is genuinely pretty nice. Yeah, <laughs> they did a good job on that. And the mold work on the chassis isn't bad either. It's unique. Uh, I you know I we've seen like you were saying some pretty divisive thoughts on it in the in the comments. But as far as cases go, like at least they did something different. Um, and then I guess too there there's a couple things that we noticed. That we'll probably talk about in the review when we do it. Couple things that definitely could have been done a little bit better. So, Andrew, where's the? <laughs> oh, there it is. Andrew specifically noticed this earlier today. I'm trying to get it in the light, but can you see that okay, Andrew? Yeah. So there's like some oil or grease marks there. Uh, general dirt, which is it, because it's all painted white, it really shows up. There's another fingerprint in here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to show that one. Is that the right angle for you? A little. I think it's in there. So there's a couple of fingerprints and things like that, and and just mold marks and like some QC issues where it could have been done cleaner, especially this back here. This is I. Well, we can get to this in a second, but I, I think they've it. hooked the reset button into the LEDs with this uh, interesting cable splicer. <laughs> Here. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I didn't see it earlier. So what is going into it? LEDs are going into it? Um, oh, it's going down here. Oh, OK. So it's going to the rear, the bottom projection LED. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Oh, they've got wiring in there. Interesting. So there's a little PCB and uh, some wiring. I can see the world's tiniest inductor in there, too. <laughs> You see it, Andrew? Someone says, copy the fingerprints with tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always a weird feeling when you uh, you get we something from a factory and it's still got fingerprints on it. Like, yeah, all we need now is to know, know where the factory is and we have their <laughs> biometrics for access. Uh, let me get a couple of, someone says, $50 for the oil smudge. It's, uh, yes, it's, it's art, OK? You need to appreciate the art. Uh, let's see, a couple super chats. Clone Fire says, the cat from outer space. Uh, Maramu, R-O, sent R-O-N 25, thank you. So this case got me thinking if current case design is best for cooling and airflow, thoughts on this. So just in general, uh, you know, we. It always feels like it's hard for a case to really improve for design because it's it's kind of simple at at the base level, but the the optimal airflow layout for a case depends on the case itself. 
but we've seen situations where inverted or like inverted and flipped orientations like on the Raven RV02 are superior to a lot of standard designs. Doesn't mean they're always better, but depending on how long the case is and where your GPU might start blocking airflow, like from the bottom, for example, if the GPU, like on an SL600M, is interrupting airflow to the CPU, that's not great. You got a couple more of these while Patrick's setting up for the build. Um, Sebastian Siwick said, you're my PC guru idol. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, I'd love for you to do a crack in G12 on an Aorus 1080 Ti with X73 AIO. Currently my project. Uh, also discount code for mouse mat. Not, not today, sorry, but we are, Patrick and I are going to be signing all the mouse mats ordered on store.gamersnexus.net during this stream only. There is no extra charge or anything for that. So if you want to get one, uh, we'll, we'll sign all those. They'll probably ship out Tuesday. Um, as for the question about the Kraken G12, you know, I've looked into it, and we back when it came out, the first one came out, I don't know if it's G10 or 11, but we did work with it. And um, it's not bad. It's, it's a little finicky with anything past the 10 series. I don't know. I've had mixed success, mostly not success, with getting it to really fit properly. But... Uh, there aren't many options these days to sort of hybridize your video card if you buy an air-cooled one. You get a couple more of these. Robert Geyer says, gaming rig by day, RC tank or drone by night? Yeah. We, we do have another case on the way that fits this comment as well. Uh, Swayan says, does this one catch on fire? You know, <laughs> there's always hope. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, that, I wasn't aware there was exact, so much uh, active circuitry in here. Eh? That's, that is the exact thing I looked at <laughs> when they asked this question. Uh, Paul the Beard's one down, and good to see you back. Uh, regular on Joe's streams as well. It says, when you're, dr when you're done, make it into a cat bed or maybe a litter tray. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad cat bed, though. Uh, Mike <laughs> Sherry, I'm worried someone might become a star child from using this mini ITX or micro ATX case as someone contacted HAL Labs. <laughs> the, the Nintendo people? <laughs> uh, David Thomas says, I've bought a desk pad or mouse pad. Can I get signatures from all the Patricks of the Department of Patrick? If you bought one during the stream, you'll, you'll get two signatures on it, but sadly only one of them will be Patrick's. Uh, let me do like, let's see, let's see, three, four, five, about six more of these, and then we'll, we'll do some building. Uh, Will Leary said, just one week after I finally order a mouse, <laughs> Matt, you do a signing special. Keep up the good work and solid journalism. Well, thank you. We'll keep uh, reporting on things. And we actually, I guess I'll note on this uh, topic, we have some really cool stuff coming up involving a third-party lab doing an x-ray on something. So I think everyone will enjoy that. But uh, yes, the, yeah. Sometimes we do special stuff for streams, but they are really pop up like this, so th we don't announce most of them. So uh, you have to keep an eye out. Ian Meltzer says, "So much long hair, so many fans. Like a not like a long-tailed cat <laughs> in a rocking chair store. I'm not sure. About the, the, I don't know if I've ever been in a rocking chair store. I don't think I'm old enough yet." Uh, our alien Etienne says, just ordered a mouse mat so my LTT t-shirt won't be the only merch in my room. Well, thank you. We're, uh, we're happy to be in there and share space with Linus, but I do hope that you cover your Linus merch with ours. Uh, Jacob P says, what about 80 millimeter Delta fans for this build? I think that is a bit much. <laughs> but uh, I, I do want it to not be deafening. Um, OK, so I'll get back to Super Chats in a moment. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll talk about some of this stuff. So Patrick's pulled out the front piece of what is basically the motherboard tray. And this just has two SSD slides on it, so you can get two 2.5-inch drives there. And this is a fan mount for a 120 mil. So if you wanted to do, you'd probably want to do intake, really. Uh, you could put one in there. It might be, I don't know if there's clearance on the underside. Yeah, there's clearance mm -hmm. underside. Yeah. So you could do it like that and do intake. Uh, there's also a fan under this one, or a fan mount under this one, and the floor of the case that I showed at the beginning of the stream that, as long as there's clearance from the power supply, its cables would fit. Um, and then Patrick showed this earlier. There's the, uh, the wiring and the PCB for the projection lamp at the bottom. 
And I think the rest of it just goes to power, maybe? Or maybe these LEDs? Yeah, there's three LEDs that I've seen and the reset switch on the front and a Molex connector. And there's some web of connections between those things. Yeah, web of connections is an accurate description. It kind of reminds me of the um, that Leon Lee like yacht case that they uh, made years ago. The yacht case um, a little and more the expensive. did you ever see the train case? I did not. They did well, a train case. Yeah. It, it actually moves. <laughs> they ship it with a small railroad track. You can put it on the track, and it actually goes around the track. Uh, I think Lee and Lee at the time, I want to say it was like over a thousand dollars, which is not surprising. But um, <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, they'd done some cool stuff, but it's definitely and that's one of them. It, that maybe yeah. It was interesting. Uh, I've only ever seen it at trade shows. I don't know if anyone actually bought it. Um, so we're only going to end up using two sticks of RAM out of the stream stop. Okay, that should be fixed. It froze for some reason. Okay. Should be fixed, I think. I just closed OBS and restarted it. Glad I, it was like right when I walked away, I think. Okay, I don't know what I was uh, talking about specifically when it dropped, but should be back up. One person said stream back. You know, we'll okay, cool. Pay. Yeah, it's, it's back, everybody. Um, OK. It's, I think it's like a 30-second delay. But mm. uh, OK, cool. There's some people are starting to say it's good. All right, sweet. So I'm not sure if someone wants to let me know in chat. You'll probably have to say it a couple times so I see it. But what, I was, what we were talking about, we can continue that. Stream is back up and going. OK, These just in case. Fans that shipped with the case seem like they. Um, I took notes on this earlier, but the screw holes were stripped from the factory. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I think they just got a little overzealous tightening them down. So they come out fine the first time, but when you put them back in, a few of them are just freewheeling in the in the holes. So, um, yeah, not great. <laughs> you only need two screws per fan, right? Well, there was the uh, that PlayStation 5 fan thing where they only used two screws per fan because they didn't think anyone would ever open it up and see that. Uh, people said the audio never dropped, just the video. So OK, um, okay cool. So we're good there. All right. Um, CPU cooler, do we have a box? We. Oh, it's right here. OK. Will a D9L or U9 fit in there? I'm actually not sure. Um, we do have some small coolers. And we can maybe do some sort of like, I think we'll ultimately install this to keep it simple, but we can do some quick fitment demonstrations with others. <laughs> yeah, I can grab any tower cooler and <laughs> demonstrate that it does not work. <laughs> um, uh, but again, if the socket was moved this way, like with a micro ATX board, um, Oh, I think yeah. you, you might actually have better luck with that with a with the tower cooler. Because it'll be more centered on the dome. Or? I think so. Okay. Um, I didn't actually test fit any uh, larger boards because we wanted that. These cable management holes would be covered up with a larger board, mm. and that was our priority. Someone says, "What's the chip on the fan blade? Is there a chip on the fan blade or something? Like damage or?" <laughs> There's uh, the molding's a little rough, but. <laughs> Let me see if we have a small tower or a small cooler. Yeah, I don't think there are any chips in here. I think it's mostly just not the best mold work. Yeah, actually, there's the <laughs> the same. Okay. If if this is what they were talking about. Then this is identical on, uh, on both fans, <laughs> so I think that's part of the molding process rather than something that happened afterwards. It'll be fine. We don't have a lot of extra 80 millimeter fans lying around at this point, so they better be fine. So this, um, unfortunately, is not what I thought it was. I thought this was the small one, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to fit. So. 
they've uh, wasted an adventure. Looks cool though. I don't think I ever. I remember I tested an AR01. I don't know about this one. The issue is that um, pretty much any tower cooler is going to have, at this point, at least a 120 mil fan on it, and they're also going to have clearance for um, a VRAM cooler or for RAM. So 120 mil plus wide and tall plus that clearance is almost always enough to bump into the top shroud of the case the way it's designed with a mini ITX motherboard at least. I think this is the smallest one I had readily accessible. And uh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> close. That actually might I not think I knew we had that one. one. Freezer A13X from Arctic. I haven't used this cooler. I don't know if it's any good. I think that Close. I think that might, well, I think that might work, yeah. I think that fits. This one says make it a boat. <laughs> uh, how does one clean a GN mouse mat? Mouse mat's pretty easy. Um, I'm happy to recommend uh, Rocket Jump Ninja's video on cleaning mouse mats. It's pretty good. It's like a minute long and it works. So if you Google search or YouTube search Rocket Jump Ninja clean mouse mat, he's got a great video on it. And he basically just throws some detergent on it, like detergent powder, and uh, scrubs it. And just not don't use like a super abrasive scrub. It just needs to be cleaned. So that'll work. If yours is a signed one, then just don't clean the signed area, uh, unless you want the signature gone, in which case, go for it. <laughs> but um, otherwise, uh, they are pretty easy to clean, and his video is a good demonstration. It's, that video came out before Mouse Mat did, but they, it works the same on all of them. They're all, uh, all of Mouse Mats are pretty much exposed to the same type of debris, so they clean the same way. Um, do gamer, we want to Gamer nerd debris, just like the ones we have in our office. Gamer gunk. <laughs> gamer gunk. Um, Need special gamer cleaning compounds for it. I'm sure Staples has them for sale. I remember that video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, do we want to use this cooler if it fits? Uh, if it fits, sure. Okay. I think um, it does. The, the issue I was having was almost always with the corner of the cooler up here. So. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I think it'd be. I don't know if it's better than the AMD one or not. They're. <laughs> they're like. It's like the same cooler, except rotated. Uh, the AMD one might be better than this, but um, we can try this, yeah. Um, does this have AM4? This one may also, oh, yeah, that's a good point. It does have AM4. Okay. Yeah, this one might agree better with the exhaust fan orientation. It would definitely work better with those, yeah. Is the CPU the 7980XE? No, unfortunately it is not. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a good point. I never need to clean my mouse pad. I use a trackball. Why do you have a mouse pad? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you even need one? You know, we need to start selling as mouse mats that are compatible with trackball mice. <laughs> it's just, I'm just covered in adhesive on the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we going to do for wiring, I guess, for the, uh, does any of the wiring in the front of this case need to be, I'm going to step over this, need to be routed anywhere? Uh, yeah. Just Molex. Um, and we need to plug in some power supply cables at some point. Yeah. That would help. I'm going to start with untangling this. <laughs> Good luck. Rats nest of wire. Did it ship like this, or did we do this? Uh, I think it shipped. Other like than this. what I did just now, um, it shipped like that. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of not great. Check out that right angle connection on the, uh, what does this go to? A power LED. Yeah, so yeah. that's the reset button, I believe, that they just plugged into the. So the front for power for the LEDs. Yeah. There's hot glue in a few places. They. Like right there. Pass that test. It's just, yeah, just on the wire. Like yeah, just insulation. on the wire, yep. No particular reason for it, just there. 
Where's our front panel connector on this board? Is that it? Uh, that speaker. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's front panel. Okay. Yeah, as this case is, uh, I honestly do think, despite all the sort of easy jokes about it, I do really like seeing interesting cases. Because um, you can do a lot with a case. We talked about this with the cat one that's in the background of the main set. How, um, how there's so much more that can be done with cases than what is being done with cases a lot of the time. Okay. Speaker front panel. Assuming that's power, but I'll look in the manual. Manual? <laughs> oh, I guess the motherboard has a manual. Yeah, <laughs> not, not the case. Oh, did the case come with a manual? No, it did not. Okay. Believe me, I looked because uh, it doesn't come across this way now that we've taken it apart, but um, it's actually not easy to figure out how to take the top off without instructions. Yeah. Because there's no screws visible from the exterior. And so it's not clear that the rear panel is magnetic. Oh, that's right. I didn't show that actually. Um, so here's the magnets. We did actually have an issue with one of the magnets. Uh, so in each of these corners you can see the magnet for holding the panel on. And this goes in the back. I was showing at the beginning of the stream how it kind of gets stuck in one corner, in, in that corner up there specifically. And one of these magnets came out, right, Patrick? Yeah, it just stayed on the case. Um, they're mostly just press fit. I think there's adhesive in there, but one of them had wiggled mm. loose. So I think that's going to be USB. I hate USB 3 headers. Yeah, well, we could borrow uh, oh, the Corsair thing. One of those right angle, yeah. Corsair shipped uh, right angle adapters for their USB 3 header. Yeah, I actually like that. 5000D. I like that. Uh, it's just terrible design. It's like so weak. All right, Don't worry, USB C is going to solve all your problems. This case gives whole new meaning to Alienware. I'm sure they wish they thought of it. Yeah, then we used to have some pretty bizarre cases back in the day. There was one uh, I saw on the... It ended up shipping, so I can talk about it. But there was one in the prototype lab in like 2009 or 10 there. And uh, the top of it, it was kind of like the Rosewell throne, I think. The top of it had these slats that could open up, except it was all by uh, electronics. So you pushed like something in software, I think and they would open like that to open up airflow. Problem with that is when it breaks, there's nothing you can do to fix it. <laughs> so, this is a bit of a downside. Uh, let's see, Super Chat. <clears throat> so, Paul Delaney said, uh, late to the party, but this case reminds me of Star Trek TNG era shuttlecraft. Excellent, everybody is on the same page with this. That is, That was my first thought as well, and I guess now I know we can write that comment into the review script and it will be understood. I wasn't sure if I should put it in there at first. Speed Racer, can I convince you to take back orders for large mod mats? Uh, not yet. So we do have another large order that we're working on. That's, I think it's in transit right now, but we're not going to open up orders for those. Uh, this time we're going to wait till all the mod mats arrive and are in stock. and. Then we'll release them for order. There's enough of them where we're not going to need a back order period. I hope they'll be in stock for a while because we did a huge order on them. Uh, so you'll be able to, basically once they're back up, as soon as you order it, it'll be shipping out the door. Uh, J Rock, and I think that's looking like early April for those. J Rocket B says, uh, sent $50, wow, thank you. Says, love your work. You and your team are amazing. Yes, well, Patrick's doing all the work right now. So we'll say team amazing. Uh, Brahmatic, could you change the boot up sound to the raffle copter sound so it goes swoo, 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 when it turns on? Uh, yeah, the old, uh, the old ventrilo text to voice. I think that works on the Windows 10. No, they broke it. Yeah, they broke it. 
people used to also do like the sprinkler goes and then <laughs> G U H C H C H C H. Leviathan Prim, will Snowflake be able to nap on top of it once it's built? Uh, probably. Yeah. Well, she's pretty good at balancing. Yeah, that's what I was looking at too. Uh, Juan Caro, would, uh oh, this scroll wheel scrolls up when I try to scroll down. Juan Caro says, would you consider doing monitor reviews? Consider yes. Um, the problem with it is, uh, so I, I spoke to some people from the display port group and um, some people who work on HDMI certification as well a while ago. And we got enough of the knowledge for testing them that I feel like we could do a good monitor review. But the problem is one of uh, just time, so manpower issue. And then the other one is, uh, I mean, just what do you want to spend the uploading time on? So not even just time we have to work on something. But with YouTube, other than special situations like conventions, for the most part, about one video to, per day seems to be the kind of the max value. Um, until you hit diminishing returns. So if it's mono review, something else would have to not go up that day. Uh, Amaranth says, bought the mouse pad too early for signing. Sorry. Uh, will there be F-Clock tuning content for the Ryzen 5000 series? Was not able to hit 2000 F-Clock that AMD said was possible wearing the 1 million subshirt too. Awesome. I'm glad you got one of the 1 million subshirts. Uh, those were really popular. They were, they were gone pretty quickly. So. Um, as for the content, the comment about F-Clock tuning, so if AMD is still saying that 2000 F-Clock is possible, I guess in the purest technical sense that's true, but we haven't been able to hit 2000 on any of the CPUs I've worked with from Zen 3. They originally were saying, yeah, you can hit 2000 during the review cycle, and then no one was hitting 2000, and during the review cycle they're like, well, wait till the new Ajisa comes out, then you'll be able to hit 2000. New Ajisa came out, I still couldn't hit 2,000 on ours when I tried it. So no amount of tuning worked for ours. Maybe it's changed. It's been a couple months since I've tried. It's possible it's changed. But uh, quick tuning suggestions, I guess, would be um, VDDG IO. I think that's what it's called. VDDG IO and VDDG CD or something. I forget that there's two, uh, two voltages. I think both called VDDG underscore something. That's a place where you can do some tuning and try and get it uh, to, to work a little bit better, but I was never able to get a lot out of it. I think the, um, the Ryzen DRM timing guy has a, like some tool for getting oh, numbers yeah. for that stuff, too. I, we haven't tried it at all. but I forgot what that's... Yeah, there is a new... What is it called? Uh, uh, one, one US MUS yeah. is his username, right? Yes, yeah. Clock tuner, maybe? That sounds right, based on his, I th yeah, clock tuner for Ryzen. That's yeah, the... so there is a clock tuner for Ryzen you might try out. I haven't tried it. I'm not sure if it does F-clock, but I would assume it does. But he did the uh, DRM calculator also. OK, cool. Uh, do a quick couple of store shout outs. We had an order from Morgan in uh, Virginia who picked up a, a uh, wireframe mouse mat. That's this one on the desk here. Thank you for picking that up. We are, Patrick and I will be signing any orders during the stream of these mouse mats, and they'll be shipping out probably Tuesday because we do need to sign it. And then we had, let me read a couple others. Had one from Tyler in Rhode Island who picked up a mouse mat. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, had one from Oliver in Australia. What is that? Is that Victoria? Is that what VIC is? That is in Australia. It is in Australia. I know that. VIC, yes, it is, it is Victoria. And Victoria, Australia, that's cool. Well, it's always uh, good to see orders from around the world. And we had Taylor from New Mexico picked up a anniversary mug and a wireframe mouse mat. Thank you. OK, uh, so any further thoughts on the case now that you've been working on it for a little bit? Uh, I was going to ask if we wanted to use the stock paste, which I've already kind of messed up. So. <laughs> do we it's fine. If it's on there, sure. Yeah. If we need to redo it, we can just use the thermal grizzly or something. Oh, I think I did put these brackets in upside down, though, so I will redo oh, that. Tables. This, I'll give them some credit for this. So because this thing comes out uh, that we were showing earlier, because that comes out, it's actually pretty easy to access the power supply. So if you need to add or remove modular cables, it's not hard. 
So that's kind of nice. Although it's still, I think, maybe a little unfair to call this like a mini ITX or a micro ITX even case. Technically, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things like, uh, I think um, we talked about that with some of the NCXT's cases where they would make a small form factor case that was basically the same size as a normal mid tower. Right. Like, I guess. Like the H210, I think. It is extremely dark in there. This, um... Okay. GPU power. All right. So... I guess let's... We'll install the video card after we get the cables connected. I'm going to look up the manual to make sure I don't have to do this again. For the cooler? Yeah, I just need to know which way to put the bracket on. Yeah, we haven't worked with this cooler before. It's uh, A13X. It's, I think it's fairly new. I remember doing a news story about it late last year or early this year. CPU. How many CPU connectors this board? One? There's one CPU and then two. Um, yeah. One AIO pump and one system fan. Oh, sorry, I meant power connectors. Oh. Oh, that's going to be kind of a pain to get to, actually. The A pin. Yeah. Can just up there. That might work. It's not so bad. So I do actually, to their credit, have cutouts in reasonable spots. I think these cutouts would align better with micro ATX. I wish they had a cutout. Uh, actually, I wish this one were a little bit longer, um, or they had another one in there to accommodate like all the uh, I/O connectors. I did it right the first time. Yeah, this is gonna kind of suck. Uh, Very uh, retro. Look, yeah, the clearance of the fan is not great. I can take the fan out if that would help. No, I want to you wanna suffer? suffer for okay. a minute. Let's have the true user experience. <laughs> That's, um, I mean, I wouldn't take fans out if I were building it in real life. I would waste an hour trying to do it the hard way and then take the fan out and have it done in 30 seconds. Asus makes a uh, flexible PCV. <laughs> <laughs> Got some elasticity to it. Uh, yeah, well, with that amount of force there no. is. Let's right. see. Uh, it wouldn't be so bad if, if it weren't toilet white. <laughs> I think this is the only color they sell. Yeah, it is. Which seems strange. Like, they just need to mold the plastic a different color. I don't know how many of these they sell. It's, it's hard to find in the US. Like, yes. I had to buy it through a Canadian retailer and they were very obviously uh, importing it from AliExpress or Alibaba, but they had it, you know, available mm -hmm. instead of waiting two months. Um, so it's not not particularly easy to get, or at least it wasn't. Maybe it is now. Okay. Uh, just reading chats. Okay. What's going on for real this time? Uh, okay. Some comments about 1200 watt power supply, a little overkill, don't you think? Yes, but it was available. So that's how we pick parts a lot of the times. Just, is it available? Uh, okay, let me get some of these super chats. So I stopped last time at KCT who said, this build needs tater tots and liquid nitrogen. We do have liquid nitrogen. We don't have tater tots. So, so we got about 50% of what you're saying it needs. Uh, there is some LM2 in there and in the big thing in the back, but uh, let's see. Case White said, can't wait, or maybe Casey, K-A-C-E. Uh, White said, can't wait to see this PC flying out with Elon Musk's Tesla. Yes, we will, we'll charter a flight to, 
We'll send it to Mars. Uh, Martin Parker, some, some future alien race will be like, what is this? How tiny were the? How <laughs> tiny was the civilization that built this spacecraft? <laughs> Uh, well, Martin, their car will be out there too, so they'll have. That's true. They'll have contacts. Yeah, they'll know that we were in conflict with a much, a much <laughs> larger being. Uh, then we have standardized meme case testing with the yes and cute pet included. <laughs> I'm hoping for objective comparisons of the uh, space and cat appeal. I guess we could could do that. Uh, I, I I gotta say I think of the two cases probably. This one is more impressive to me. The they did curved tempered glass. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Cooler Master made such a big deal over that. Yeah, and Thermal Take. They both talk about how hard it is to do curved tempered glass because it shatters a lot. But it's also like all aluminum. And uh, it's pretty genuinely good build quality. So, I don't know. That case is hard to beat. I don't remember what it costs. I think um, it was also about 200 I think it cost us. More than it should have. It was hard to get in the U.S. <laughs> one of them was destroyed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not our fault. Uh, well, there was a shipping issue with one of them. Uh, let's see, Chronicle Cultivation. Haven't caught a stream in a while. Hey Steve, can you get Roman to send? No. Can you get Roman to send my wife an OC bracket? We never got that. O11 mini signed snake juice. You know, I'll, I'll tell him. I'll tell, I'll tell Roman, but I think that name change might throw him off, and uh, all that progress we made on the O11 Mini might be, might be wasted now for the OC bracket. Most of chat has no idea what's going on. Uh, project 5.4 underscore 2B, $5, no message, thank you. Repo Man, uh, Repo Man said, uh, $5, is this case a Star Trek shuttle? Yes. <laughs> the front end of the Disney monorail. Or the submarine from Fantastic Voyage 1966. <laughs> All apt comments. Uh, I like they, they timestamped it for us. Uh, yeah. cool. <laughs> I hadn't considered the Disney monorail. <laughs> uh, it's the case of the future. Yeah. It's what the, I mean, it's kind of like those 90s books about what 2000 would look like with flying cars and stuff. They do make a, another more like, I think they call the case like the shuttlecraft or something. Um, it's a little more angular. Mm. It's like a, basically just a big rectangle with sled runners oh, on it. Oh, yeah. Is that the one you showed me? Yeah. So that one's really a shuttle. Where you were saying we put this on top of that one and then yeah, we yeah. actually have a TNG shuttle. If you combine the two of them, you're like 90% of the way there. There is really bad uh, visibility in here. <laughs> we can turn the LEDs on. <laughs> OK. We have a uh, SATA drive, yes. Uh, right. yes. Or are we using M.2? We have the SATA drive. Let's OK. I can grab that. So I plugged in SATA for that. <clears throat> uh, don't need that one. Do need the 24 pin. Somewhere in here. I might have set it aside. We can get it later. Okay. <clears throat> oh. I guess, or I think our real thoughts on this case are going to be formed when we try to reassemble, like get the top panel on. It looks like it'll clear though. So, how much uh, Molex has Be Quiet given us? Oh, yeah. So, we have three fan headers on the board. I've got one right there. Okay. Two, two Molex. So we have four fans potentially if we put an extra one in. Um, so we can split them or four fans. Yeah. Um, so. And these have Molex headers, so we could just okay. plug those into Molex. Yeah. How many fan headers on the board? Three. Two, three. And then one's being taken by this. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wow, that's that's definitely. I haven't worked with a tower core that small in a long time. It's not even the mount. I don't think. I think <laughs> it's just flexing at the. Uh, so the plastic flexes, which is fine, but the tower flex is a little too. 
Okay, anyway, that's a story for another day. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we can do... It's Mike's problem. Yeah, that's, yeah <laughs> Mike will deal with that when we test it. Um, I think we can do Molex maybe for the back two, and okay. then plug the CPU cooler into the board, and then we'll do... I guess one fan up here. I don't. Th I think we don't want to do a fan in the bottom down there because the cables okay. are gonna suck to route. But could do it, I guess. Everybody loves Molex, right? Because <laughs> you can daisy chain them and it's perfectly safe. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder if you can water cool this case. JP Renoir said. No. <laughs> yeah. There's no. there's one mount yeah. where you could put a 120 radiator theoretically, and it's like fully inside the case body. You'd have to modify it for sure, like to get the to get like a pump and a a res and everything in there. Yeah. And if you used a CLC, then your CPU block is above everything. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's at exactly the same level as the reservoir. I mean, radiator. You'd just be running the tubes over that way. So yeah, that's the top. Just because we haven't shown it for a little while, and some more people are in the video in the view uh, account. Um, you could do some cool stuff if you are handy as a modder. You could, I mean, it'd look pretty sweet with like the larger glass reservoirs at the back on the sides. That would look cool, but you would probably need the really need the radiator external too, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's the top of the case. If you didn't catch it earlier. All right, I changed my mind. I hate Molex. <laughs> well, it's, Molex is still pretty new, so it's the fact that you haven't made up your mind yet is normal. Do you think their organization feels bad about the fact that, like, people use their name as a generic name for the worst connector that they make? Probably. <laughs> I would. That would upset me. <laughs> like, you're like, we just make the four pin. <laughs> we make a lot of other stuff too. Yeah, Molex uh, actually makes some 12-pin connectors that NVIDIA could have used. Uh, uh, but NVIDIA wanted to make its own special connector because it's better than existing 12-pin connectors that two organizations have already standardized. We need a third standard to unify the other two standards. <laughs> that X XKCD comic. <laughs> yeah, exactly, XKCD. <laughs> yeah. Daft Punk helmet case, yes, uh, yes, that is, uh, that is one of the other common cons. You said it's nice to have viewers from around the world. Yeah, uh, send it to Jay so he can make it look like it was an accident, like as in he's gonna kill it and make <laughs> it look like, like, basically hire Jay as a hitman for this case, and he'll make it look like it was. Accidentally destroyed in shipping. Phil, take it out back. <laughs> Makes me nervous when Andrew moves to get a better angle on what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch me. I'm still thinking about Jay the Hitman killing cases. He's got like Phil in the background laughing while he beats the case with the bat. <laughs> uh, all right, so cables for. Good on except for this this twelve pin. God, this is kind of a mess. So you there. don't like what I've done? Not <laughs> your not you. It's the fact that it's the fact we've got this thing for LEDs that bothers me. This is just like it looks like a submarine and it's the build qual I mean these wires have to be like a twenty six gauge or something. Yeah, it's these are so flimsy. I can't see. It's it. 12 volts goes in, but you don't know what comes come out. out. <laughs> yeah. or, I guess Molex is 12 and five. Yeah, 12 and five. Thanks, Cambridge Nexus mod, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we do have the pinout on the mod mat, but unfortunately, it's out of stock right now. But our mouse mats and uh, toolkits are in stock, though. Okay, why don't you pull that up to the NVIDIA connector? I think I actually plugged in two of these. We only need one. You mean be quiet? Didn't put a. Uh, they did not include. An brand. They did not include a special 12-pin connector in their power supply that was shipped. I think 
before these video cards. I'm trying to, okay, there we go. And get rid of that cable. Can you? No. <laughs> it's too late. Oh, I unplugged the wrong one. Oh, wait. Oh, it's two. Do we have one that's just one? Probably. To clean it up a little bit. Um, this is CPU. Uh, it's also two. CPU. Okay, well, I guess we'll just go with that one then. I can't see. I, <laughs> it's as dark as the prospect for this case. Dark as a dungeon. <laughs> um, I'm gonna let you. Okay. I think well, plug I, that in. It's, I think that's fair because I'm the one that put the power supply in first. So <laughs> this is what I get. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna let you do that so I can get a couple comments so we don't fall too far behind. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't have a single 8-pin wire. They, they both go to two. YouTube Destroyer says pre-recorded. No question mark, no period, just that's all they said. No, not pre-recorded. So we're gaming on a spaceship now. Yes. Natural progression. Uh... Let's see, I guess I can take this question. Uh, Ice Bear says, my Noctua HD 15 on my 5600 X is running at 90 degrees Celsius. Pace is good, mount is good, I'm not sure what's going on, room temp is 19C, airflow is good. And it's on a 5600 X, that is way too high. Um, maybe, so first thing I would do is remount. Second thing I would do is uh, make sure that the auto, if you're running auto voltage on the board, that it's not stupid high. Maybe you can tune it down manually. And other than that, maybe, maybe a small mistake on the installation. Like try, <clears throat> you can try grab the top of the D15 and try to wiggle it a little bit. Don't apply too much force. And if it moves, then the mount's no good. You said the mount's good, so I'm assuming you did that already. So check the fans are the right direction. Uh, check the auto voltage on the motherboard. Those are the two things I would do. I'd probably remount anyway. Okay. Uh, let's see. You're going about this all wrong. Just leave the top off and stick the baby Yoda in it. Grogu. Spoilers. <laughs> Somebody already said in chat. Don't get mad at me. Uh, Solid Snake, mouse map purchase, can I get RTX on signature from Tech Jesus? Uh, you, you can definitely get the signatures. Anyone buying the mouse mats today during the stream will get both of us signing them, and you can grab them on store.gamersnexus.net. This is the mouse mat. As for an RTX on signature, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to write RTX or any NVIDIA IP on the mouse mat. <laughs> uh... Also, my handwriting doesn't look like RTX on. Uh, Latios Eon says, I love the concepts of these cases over the meta of tempered glass boxes, but they're quite often poorly executed. I don't disagree with you. I think you are completely correct to say it's different from the meta. Uh, that's good phrasing. I also think that they often are poorly executed. When It's like, it's kind of like, I think this case, I'm sure Patrick has thoughts on this, like a lot of other ones like this, sometimes they, a lot of them feel like they were just, they had a cool idea, but maybe didn't want to invest in really making it cool and just kind of threw it together and tossed it out into the market. Yeah. Um, maybe without realizing the potential, especially, especially if it's a company that uh, doesn't have any distribution or way to reach a Western audience where... Um, they can increase their market, their addressable market size. So, uh, like that Yeston case is a great example, again, of a really well-executed different case that had a limited market reach. Uh, Something like this is probably designed from the outside in. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's probably accurate. 
Yeah, they started with the shell, and then they said, how do we fit a computer in this? Do you want the, uh, do you want the HD audio plugged in, Steve? We don't need it. If you, if you don't want it in there, we don't need it. Uh, I have to find it. This is why many ITXs is difficult. <laughs> it's so difficult that the space is at a premium and not in this case. Space is on fire sale in this case. Uh, Zach F just got the O11 DXL based on your review. Uh, GN doesn't do fan reviews, do they? I would definitely appreciate GN's review standards for fans. We've talked about it a lot over the years. Uh, I have plans. I've had plans for a long time to do fan reviews, but um, right now we need more space to set up the fan tester that I want to get. And the, not only is the space expensive to do that, but the fan testers are expensive. And we'll talk more about it later. But I do have plans for the kind, like from our perspective, the immediate future, by which I mean like maybe towards end of year, beginning of next year, I hope to have a fan tester in uh, for fan testing. And um, the one we have our eye on is the one that fan manufacturers use for validating for putting the number on the box. So getting that particular tester means we would not only be able to test the fans for our own charts, but test against the claims on the boxes. And I think that would be really cool, but um, it's expensive. I mean, those, uh, those the fan testers are, they, we'll talk more about the price when we get one, I guess. But when I say very expensive, I mean like the most expensive single thing we've bought. Uh, let's see. How do you think the thermals will be in this? Uh, not <laughs> good. I don't think they will be good. We can blame it on Arctic. Is that plastic flammable? Looks like it's flammable. I, I mean, I think all plastic to some extent. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I might need some mold marks on here. I'll look around. <laughs> uh, Michael Graziano says, I think it's more like Star Trek Voyager Delta Flyer. <laughs> Thank you for, yes, let's, let's do that. Let's get, let's get an argument going in chat for specifically uh, which series of Star Trek this looks like it comes from. Is I it won't a be TNG? able to argue with anybody. <laughs> TNG Shuttlecraft. We've got a vote for uh, Michael here said Voyager Delta Flyer. It's, um, this is marked ABS, so if that tells you anything about whether you can set it on fire or not. <laughs> uh, George Mitchell said, do you know any place that can fix GPUs? Brand new 2080 Ti D6 postcode manufacturer won't help. God. Uh, if you didn't blow it up, you should force them to fulfill their warranty, their RMA. Uh, if it's under warranty, then I would pursue that route. I don't know anyone specifically who fixes GPUs, unfortunately. Um, you would probably, someone's saying Star Trek Discovery, Deep Space Nine, DS9, Discovery. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, fight over, <laughs> fight over which Star Trek it comes from. It's the pod Spock was in. TNG, no doubt. <laughs> Discovery, but it looks like crap. Uh, <laughs> Is that a judgment on Discovery? Or? Someone says it comes Jeez. from Star Trek Attack of the Clones. <laughs> Star Trek's most famous installment. Right after uh, Star Trek The Phantom Menace, of course. Camino. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I found where the headers are, and I don't like it, so they're not going in. OK. <laughs> Which one's the? the uh, there's, we have another USB 2.0 header, and mm. we have an HD audio header. And okay. um, for anybody oh. that buys this board, they are oh, obstructed yeah. by this M.2 heatsink down here, uh, right. I believe. So we need to dig in there. Um, find them. Oh, yeah, I need to check. Did you check the uh, front panel connector? Yeah, yeah, I got it. They, they have it marked. Is uh, power power's on the top edge? Power's in the right spot? Yeah. OK. There. OK, so we don't need this cable. Uh, I guess this can go in here. So we want the, where's it going to be cleanest? That's going to be kind of a weird. Hmm. That's not bad. If we run no, soda through there and then up there. Okay. 
Do we have screws for this? Um, we have the case screws. Yes, there are screws. Uh, I think if you want to read some of the super chats, I highlighted the one I stopped on. Just read them to yourself first. Going up or down? Uh, down, but you're going to have to use the mouse button and the thing to scroll because okay. the scroll wheel is sabotaged. I got you. Also, this is disgusting. I hadn't actually touched this yet. Uh, the like grease or oil mark on the plastic, it's sticky. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Uh, did you read from Timothy Gregg, is it recyclable? I did not um, read that one. I didn't read the one that's highlighted, if that's a different one. Is it recyclable? I'm trying to find out how to properly dispose of the spaceship. Uh, yes, it is. There's, it's marked recyclable on the uh, top shelf. So I somehow don't believe that most of this is recyclable. Uh, Amaranth1111 says, uh, $10, thanks for the response. I tried many combos of VDDGIO and VDDGCCD. None worked for me past 1900. Got WEHA, WHEA oh, yeah. errors left and right, even on the newest BIOS on the Dark Era. Yeah, that sounds like, I'm just grabbing screws, but that sounds like the issue that Andy's been having with that for a while now. So, uh, unfortunately, until they have an Ajisa that can support this higher F clocks, I don't know that there's much you can do. It sounds like you've already done the things I would recommend. Um, $20 from Michael Bowers, thank you. Thanks. Um, 11 years from a Bavarian, uh, can you investigate why Renoir and Cezanne APUs don't properly support HDMI 2.1? MB550 motherboards list HDMI 2.1 support, but only up to UHD uh, 8 bits per color, 60 hertz, 120 hertz only with uh, 4 to 2 to 0, which looks bad. Um, yeah. I don't really know a lot about that. Um, HDMI 2.1 seems like a tall order for any APU, though. Yeah, I but would I would agree with that. If they maybe if Andy is making big claims about it, it's a problem. Uh, I haven't looked at their marketing for Renoir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't looked at HDMI 2.1 that much in general. No. Really. Yeah. So could we look into it? Maybe, but um, that's not something that I'm personally well versed in. So I probably would I'd stay away from it until. I could study it, and I'm not sure that I have time to study it anytime soon. Damn, that's not bad. Did you want to, um, do you have anything else you wanted to do in this lower compartment before I seal it off? I guess um, put in a fan? Yeah, uh, if the fan seems like it would work. I was mostly worried about putting the fan on there because we couldn't initially fit a tower cooler on there. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, we could still do that. I think it would work. Let's try it. They have some, uh, that particular fan comes with um, like uh, bolts and nuts so mm. rather than normal fan screws. Oh, okay. Okay. What's um, the next question? Did you want to talk about uh, the case stuff from earlier at all? Or um, which case stuff? The, uh, I we, got we posted that video asking for community feedback. Oh, and, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, um, I can, let me, what's the uh, question is, uh, Pitboy, $5 Canadian, any luck partnering with a case manufacturer? Um, anyone willing to work with you, uh, you would be okay to put your design on it, uh, like Der Bauer? So um, this is referencing, we did a video a while ago about how we have an opportunity to sort of make a case with existing manufacturers. And um, I did a whole video on it for those who aren't up to speed, talking about the downsides of that and the upsides. To answer, uh, so I'll take those questions one at a time, I guess. First question of any luck finding a case manufacturer willing to work with us, the answer is yes. So I already had a manufacturer I was explicitly talking to um, when I made the video. But after we posted it, we had basically everyone in the industry reach out to us and say, hey, if you guys want to work with us to make a case, let us know. Our PMs would be happy to talk to you, product managers. So basically, everyone wants to work with us to make a case, uh, which, which I am a little skeptical of some of that. Um, they, some of them, I, I think, are more genuinely interested in doing cool stuff with us. And some of them, it's like, 
more more clearly uh, a like how do we make our brand immediately relevant type of thing, depending on their size relative to, I guess, the other case manufacturers whose stuff we review. So question of are we going to work with someone? Right now, I think my decision is no. I, I was really leaning towards it originally and leaning towards doing one, and we might still do one, but I just more and more feel like we don't really need that partnership. And um, if we want to make our own case, I think I did some research on how the factories work, and you can, so one of the problems with making your own case without a partner, like uh, an existing case manufacturer, is cost, because tooling costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's very expensive to make the tooling for a case. And um, one of the things I learned in doing research was that you could talk to a factory and uh, amortize the tooling cost, just like you can amortize the cost of a, a house. And so what they do is they take some amount of the sales value from you to pay for the tooling, so you don't have to pay it all up front. So that makes it kind of interesting uh, to pursue it on our own. And there are downsides to that as well. You don't get a team with experience, but you also don't potentially get sabotaged by something you don't really want to put your name on. <laughs> so um, for now, though, I think my current decision is no on making a case with a, a tentative, like maybe I'm interested later, uh, mostly because I, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't know that I really want to work that closely with any of these companies. I kind of like where we are now, where we're completely neutral. So that's my biggest problem with it, is, is any kind of conflict or change of relationship with the company to work with them on a case. Uh, so right now, no, but maybe we'll pursue it on our own later. Um, $10 from Rob S. Thank you. Um, $5 from Deep Fried Lettuce. <laughs> any, <laughs> any plans to review the Yeston 6800 XT or the Maxon RTX 3070 iCraft? Both are waifu GPUs. The Maxon what? 30 3070 iCraft. iCraft, OK. I think we've seen those. Those are the very anime I, GPUs. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't have any plans to review uh, more GPUs right now. I feel like people are kind of burned out on them. So. Um, Two dollars from a person. Is liquid metal on laptop worth it or a good idea? Uh, maybe there's some laptops that suck so bad with cooling that it would be worth it. Is it a good idea? You know, the biggest problem with it is I kind of hate this fan. The the way they're doing this. Yeah, I could maybe have. <laughs> if you want me to grab one of the no, pastel that's ones, fine. I, I installed it on the wrong side, but the. Instead of being four screws, which would be quick, it's eight screws. Oh. Because uh, it's, you know, it's got the, it's eight pieces of hardware. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, GP is not planning to do more reviews of right now to answer that question. Um, so another question from Konza, $5 uh, about the GN case. Uh, I think you've answered that Answered one. that pretty well, yeah. Um, $10 from Agent Rosé. Uh, when will the medium mod mats be available again? Oh, same time as the large ones. Uh, early to middle of April. We're going to put them all in stock at the same time. No back order period, but there should be enough for, for everybody, I think. Um. I might let you do the next three screws on this. OK. <laughs> but it is in the right place now. I just was. I installed it on the opposite side by accident when I was trying. I was debating where I wanted the uh, the nut versus the bolt to be visible, yeah. and then I flipped it over the wrong way. I don't think we've successfully used these fans in anything yet. They because they can only be installed in They're one. They're like nice. On one face. They're ruggedized, uh, which is kind of cool. But um, serrated for you know. Yeah. Get through some meat. That's what you need to do with fans normally. I think. It's oriented correctly now. It is definitely oriented correctly. So I don't know if you watched Jay's video. Uh, he <laughs> told me about it. <laughs> he put some carrots through it. No. <laughs> uh, I highlighted the one. That I haven't read that one. Is he putting Rocket Lake in that? No. Um, Rocket Lake is not available yet 
for anybody. Is my 5500 XT bottlenecking my 5900 XT? Probably, if you're playing at 1080p or something. Well, yeah, definitely, actually. Okay. Uh, Oh, that's right, I was talking about liquid metal. Um, at liquid metal, the problem in laptops is just if you actually get it on something else. And the problem I have with liquid metal and laptops is because I use them uh, for travel, and liquid metal ages, and I'd be worried about having to replace it while I'm traveling. Although, no travel right now. but uh, Jimmy Douglas says, the case looks like the bodywork that covers my motors and batteries. Uh, by the way, thanks for all the infotainment. You folks rock. Thank you. Well, thank you for the, the comment. The, um, the, the, yeah, the bodywork on the, it's kind of funny to call it bodywork. It's like <laughs> treating it like an actual vehicle. <laughs> I guess that's what it is, though. <laughs> it, is, it is not bad, really. Uh, legendary X590 motherboard. That's, a, that's a, someone's username. That's not an announcement I'm making. It says, I have a 9700F that I'm happy with, but I want to enable XMP. Could I just buy Z390 for that? Uh, 232 gigabyte, 3600, CL18, bought on sale a year before. I found GN and CL importance. Um, Z390, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I th think it will... Since it's not a K processor, I don't think it's going to let you go above the frequency spec for that processor, which is probably 2933. So you can enable XMP, and I think it'll give you timings, but since you're not getting frequency, you'd be better off running auto timings or, or manually setting them, because you can get them lower, since the frequency is going to be capped. So short answer is like, yes, you can enable XMP, but you're not going to get all the benefit. And you might be better off doing it auto or manual. I'm thinking a Toy Story theme PC. Said by uh, JC Mark. This? Yeah, Andrew, this what's... kind of futuristic for Toy Story. Oh, yeah, because yeah. of Buzz Lightyear, maybe? Oh, he's getting a new movie. Buzz Lightyear is, specifically? <laughs> okay. Well, so, Andrew, since you're the expert, then, do you think this is suitable for a Toy Story themed PC? Andrew says no. <laughs> uh, Andrew's apparently got strong opinions about that subject. I, I won't ask again. Joshua Cohen says, Got a mouse mat a few weeks ago. It's great. Also, did Elon Musk make this case? And can the PC be shipped to Mars? We did talk about that earlier. Uh, can it be? Yes. Do I have the means to do it? No. But feel free to, I guess... If you joke about it on Twitter enough, it'll happen. Yeah, <laughs> if you if you tell enough, if you make enough memes about it on Twitter and tag Elon Musk, send him a screenshot of the case when we've got it all built, and maybe he'll do it. It's, it seems like the kind of thing he'd be willing to spend millions of dollars on. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Casey White says, "Well, today's mouse mat purchases be signed. Uh, the ones ordered during this stream, definitely." Uh, will be signed, and then anything after the stream, uh, I guess, no, because I'm going to change the SKU identifier once the stream ends. You might have like an extra five or ten minutes for it. Um, I'll see about if there's a way our, our uh, logistics guy can make it so that we can sign the ones from before the stream too, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, let's see, five dollars. Should I look into undervolting my 3090? It gets quite hot. Oh, I have no idea how to do it. I would, the easiest thing to do is to drag the power target down in the negative direction to like 95 or 90 percent power. That would probably help. You could also set a custom fan curve. That's the first thing I would do. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Kelroon says, I'm looking at my mouse mat now. I don't see any RTX. Sorry, it's RTX off. <laughs> Good. I didn't, I didn't want to do an RTX mouse mat because then we'd have to ship a lot more hardware with it. Well, And we'd have to get console uh, compatibility at some point. Some of, those, uh, some of the mouse pads are ray traced, right? Uh, you mean the LED ones? No, I mean the, uh, are the renders. Oh. Andrew's making some 
Very, okay, he shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some cool, actually I previewed it in, um, in the 3060 review, we showed a really short preview of something Andrew's working on. It was a low res uh, preview of it. But that's, uh, I guess that you, you must be using ray tracing on, right? Yeah. But NVIDIA obviously invented ray tracing. It just didn't exist until NVIDIA did it. I think everybody knows that. I mean, let's see. Uh, uh, ray tracing, Wikipedia. Let's just see. Let's just see the exact I'm date. Read through this. Right, Control F, 197. Yep, there it is, 1974. So 1974 and 1976, there was discussion of, of uh, ray tracing, and um, that's actually all lies. Uh, NVIDIA invented it. So. Jensen himself. Thanks, Jensen. <laughs> Jensen himself architected real time ray tracing. So. That looks pretty good. It does, but I forgot I need a SATA power cable. I hope we got all of the power adders firmly connected into the power supply. Uh, that would be unfortunate. They're never coming back out. <laughs> That's. I'll have to get a good shot of the. Uh, Kale management work. Yeah, this is the patented Patrick cable management method where you just wad them all in a corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. If no one removes, it's that uh, system integrator approach, like the cyber power approach. Oh, yeah. If nobody ever takes off the panel, it's Schrodinger's cable management. <laughs> as long as the panel's on there, the cable management's both good and bad. <laughs> uh. I'm ready with the uh, with the rest of the panel. Okay. Um, I guess we need a set of. Do we have any uh, spare SATA cables? Careful on the tension of this. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what? I, I'm actually curious what chat would say about this. I'll wait to say it until I can see the computer. Um, I have thought about in the past. I'm not saying I'm doing this right now. I'll make that very clear. I've thought about in the past doing like a, like a, if you order something on the store, you get a SATA cable. Because I want to, we have more of these. We have like multiple bins of these. I can't get rid of them. And we only need so many. Uh, I can bring them to Cramden Institute, which is a great location that recycles stuff or reuses it. But even they're going to be like, Steve, come on. <laughs> like, they're going to be like, we don't want you taking the whole bin with SATA cables. So I'm curious if chat thinks they, they would want an extra SATA cable or if everybody has this problem. I guess with M.2's popularity, probably everybody is uh, ending up with extra SATA cables. This um, Asus has managed to, they've put the SATA connectors um, straight down mm. onto the board, like old school style, but they've oriented them in a way that if you put a right angle connector on there, it would come back towards the uh, RAM. Uh -huh. So you can't put a right angle connector right. on the... Uh, yeah. So that's unfortunate. It's signed to SATA cables, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, really small. Someone says, I already have 20 of them. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Everyone has this problem. Yeah. <laughs> Because well, yeah. they have to send two, they have to send multiple of two different styles with every motherboard. They have to send the right angles and the. Uh, <laughs> I have um, to see. Some people say they take them, and some people saying they have the same problem. I have to see if there's like a, um, if there's a way we can add a, uh, a checkbox to check out where it's like, yes, I want one. No, I don't. Like an opt-in. <laughs> Maybe I'll give. Uh, our distributor a box of SATA cables and he can toss them in if the check box is checked. Oh, he'd hate me for that too. <laughs> well, he likes the uh, product excuse, right? Yeah, he, he likes managing additional steps in the shipping process. <laughs> he'd be like, why are we shipping these? What are they? We have to validate all of them to make sure that oh, they're God. Really <laughs> well, No, that's why they would be free. <laughs> They'd have to be free that way. It's like if it doesn't work, then... You didn't pay for it. Okay, let me take these away. You don't want to use the braided one? No. Okay. <laughs> I think those are from Cable Mod, actually. 
Some of them, some are from MSI. The ones from MSI actually don't work. But. Yeah, we uh, we do actually get SATA cables that cause issues on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. But we're <laughs> but luckily we can just put them in the electronics recycling bin. Yep. We have enough. That's a chance to do custom SATA cables. No thanks. I don't want to. Like we were just talking about, we've done enough, um, had enough failed cables now that I don't want, to, don't want to deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. If we've learned anything, it's that um, recently, it's that <laughs> making cables and contracting yeah. factories to make cables is. Did you do, risky business? Um, did you get the fan cable routed and plugged in? Um, yeah, let's okay. plug in. <laughs> Uh, what is it not routed? No, no. I just said it, it oh, could I be see. through this hole, but I put it through the other one. It's not too bad altogether. I can do it better. Nice. I think that fan's going to help a lot, actually. Well, that we're probably going to want to control the speed on that. I don't know if we want it in there for the review or not. The EK fan. So we can do one one test of each. Yeah. Um, it does require a lot more careful cable management because this yeah. whole forward section of the case could just have cables wadded up in it if right. the fan wasn't there. So, uh, how do you feel about the case having worked on it? Well, I didn't pay for it, so. <laughs> it's not bad, I think, from like a small case standpoint. Mm. It's because it's not really a small case. Yeah. So. Yeah, as far as mini ITX building, it's there's less a of, of a pain than usual. Yeah, there's a lot of space in it. Get it? There's a lot of space. There's a lot of space in it. Do you get it, Patrick? Yeah. Because it's a spaceship. Here, I put one of these screws on. <laughs> You're not appreciating. <laughs> Yeah, moving moving immediately fast though. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to point this out to make everybody angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this fan, uh, so they're nut and bolt, and then one of them's backwards. <laughs> Baby Yoda's crib. When do you bolt the wheels on? Yeah. This is where I uh, go to does sleep at night. Rets, Rets, Rets MR says, does Patrick ever not take shortcuts? I guess talking about your cable I, routing. I, I, listen, <laughs> if you do it twice, it's not a shortcut. <laughs> uh, uh, someone's unhappy that you did the screw that way. <laughs> a user named Black Hole says he doesn't get my space pun. I, I somehow don't believe him. <laughs> Praise the cameraman. There you go. Andrew getting some recognition. Good job, Andrew. I did it. <laughs> are, are we ready to seal it up? I mean, I. Uh, yeah. It does it. So did it clear? Uh, yeah. Nice. Wow, that's kind of neat. I, I'm looking forward to the cooler more than the case. This should be our new cooler test bench. Mm. It's very convenient <laughs> to work with. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. New conclusion: all coolers are bad. Oh yeah. That's not going to work here, but that's all right. Yeah. Like I was saying, not a lot of Western market reach on this one, but yeah. Or is that with the power supply? <laughs> that was be quiet. Is that be quiet? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Could yeah, have just yeah. just as likely come with the case. I hope they toggled the voltage to the right. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. This should be auto. Yeah, let's close it up. Uh, okay. Seal it. <laughs> Seems like it is going to attract fingerprints. Oh yeah, I can see many already. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. All right, chat. What do you think? Is it bad or is it not bad? I want to see. I want to see the thoughts on how this thing looks. How heavy is it? It's not that bad. Yeah, it is actually a really light case without the parts in it. What does everyone think? Tell me what you think specifically of the case. We'll probably do a uh, review of this later. Looks all right. 
looks as airtight as a real spaceship. That's, you know, that's a, uh, I like the way you phrase that. You belong in their marketing department. <laughs> I like that um, they put these sled runners on it and then they had to wrap the runners with rubber so yeah. that it won't actually slide. Yeah, well that's why I want it to like snow so we can push it around. <laughs> so, let's see, two people said love it. Uh, someone said bad in all caps. <laughs> someone said F. Uh, let's see, Daft Punk helmet. Uh, dope AF, Steve ETA on large anti-static mod mat. Well, that's not about the case, but <laughs> April. Uh, needs a paint job. You could do some cool stuff on that. I mean, since it's since it's coated white, it would be fairly easy to customize it. Mm -hmm. uh, meh, it's it's so bad, it's good. Needs RGB. This I think could actually do with RGB. All right, so I'm seeing. I'm honestly a good amount of these are positive. Looks looks heckin' sick, someone says. No IO shield. Yeah, we don't do IO shields here. They, the systems don't stay together long enough. Seems like a waste of space in front. Yeah, uh, I mean, clearly they. the front was just so this could exist. Is it wiping off, at least? Mm, kind of. Well, not we should make sure we film it first, too, unless you already got B-roll that, Andrew. I'll save it for you. <laughs> I think this is a Star yeah. Citizen Origin Jumpworks themed case. <laughs> Love it. Someone says. I, you know, I honestly, it looks like it's 50-50 on whether people like it or not. It's certainly different. I think that's, that's a good, <laughs> that's, 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 a, that's a good description of it, yes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm pretty happy with uh, how it came together, at least. It was... There weren't any major headaches we ran into. Yeah, doing it's a live. Be Patrick Stone's new workstation. That's right. Yep, he'll he will unironically love it. He probably will genuinely think it's like the coolest thing. Be like, yes, we we specifically built this for you. <laughs> <laughs> he'll love it. All right, uh, let me get through some of the the last super chats. I'm gonna do a cutoff. I update the um, text on the screen. Uh, Let's see, vertical bar. No more super chats. Uh, I guess I could just do no more super chats. So I'm going to read all the ones that are on the screen now, but don't send any more. That doesn't fit, but um, let's do. Uh oh. Okay. All right. Well, it's the real streaming there it goes. experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Where did uh, Case White said, just, oh, I might have gotten this one already, but just bought a mouse mat. Always proud to support dedicated people. Keep up the stellar work. Thank you. Uh, Alex Santos. I'm not sure what that comment means, so I'm not going to read it. I don't think it's bad, but I'm not sure what it means. Uh, Deep Fried Lettuce said, speaking of unique and well-made cases, Taobao ITX boutique shops have been putting out innovative designs. Shame they aren't ideal for GN reviews. We can look into them, though. Um, I have had people say that there's a lot of cool ITX cases on Taobao, so we'll look around and see what's there. Daniel G said, Mod Crystal patron mousepad buyer today and some support in Super Chat. Well, thank you. That is a huge amount of support, all those things. I really appreciate it. Says, hello from ThoughtFix. Uh, I'm building a PC now with my ModMat and signed toolkit. Jeez, that is a lot of stuff. Well, thank you very much for the dedicated support. We appreciate it. And uh, I hope you, your PC build right now is going well. I normally run streams and things like that when I'm working on systems as well. So Peter Shukerst, $2, no message. Uh, M-A-1-C-O, $1, no message. Heavy Palms says, Captain, I'm not sure where this is going. Power, I guess. I guess maybe maybe a reference to something. Star Trek. Uh, Rowan Hurricane says, is stretching the tubing a bit a particularly bad thing for an AIO? Will it cause a leak? That's a great question. Uh, so the tubing shouldn't really stretch. A lot of it's made out of rubber. There's two types of tubing for liquid coolers, AIO specifically, that are commonly used. There is um, a, a corrugated tubing where it's plastic and it's it's literally like corrugated cardboard. 
and that is it's lined on the inside with Teflon and it's very rigid it does not stretch and you should definitely not try to stretch it so it's like the Cooler Master uh, stuff and anyone who buys from Cooler Master so other brands might might um, use them as a supplier so if you have the plastic corrugated tubing then uh, do not stretch it because if that Teflon cracks what will happen is permeation gets a lot worse and um, and then for the rubber tubing it can stretch a little bit but if it's like stretching on the barbs then there's a problem so try to avoid it little t tiny bit of stretch is, is maybe doable on the rubber ones but I would try to avoid it uh, David Gillespie uh, says Looks like a case manufacturer is trying to channel Mork and Mindy. PXL Generator says, Alpha Cool 2x80 rads. Oh, yeah, we do have an 80 mil radiator. Uh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> we do actually have one of those. I'd go get it to show the stream. But we we sure. have it because it was uh, Dumped lying on around yeah. and uh, not selling, I think. That's a good point, though. They're saying uh, Alpha Cool 2x80 radiators with Ice Bear Open Loop AIO. Definitely actually doable. <laughs> um, let's see. Eric, uh, five dollars. Thank you. Sixteen fifty unlocked BIOS with LN2 stream when I do have a sixteen fifty unlocked BIOS. I'm amazed that anybody remembers that. Uh, it was like a comment I made in a video once. It might have even just been an offhand comment in a stream, but I had considered doing LN2 with a sixteen fifty to make it better than whatever the AMD card was that was beating it. Oh, stream. Wow. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think this is, our audio might still be going. One. All right. Let's see if that's fixed. <sighs> okay. Stream froze. Audio is still coming through. Yeah. I don't know why this system does that. It did that with the uh, stream with EVGA also. We'll have to try and figure that out. It's mm -hmm. hard to troubleshoot because it's like it takes hours for it to happen. It's mostly new ports from. Yeah. We like we just built this streaming system. So we got rid of some problems, but introduced others. Uh, Eric Meyer says, breaking news. Steve sponsored by Corsair, not Corsair. <laughs> Patty said, uh, which would be easier, getting a new GPU at MSRP from an actual retailer or making one from scratch on my own? Honestly, <laughs> making one from scratch. Uh, if you can buy like a BGA, GPU package and solder it onto a board, it might be faster to learn how to do that. It genuinely might be faster to do that. It's a cool video out there, somebody making a GPU on a breadboard that just does like analog video. Oh, output. I haven't seen that one. I did see one where a guy uh, lifts a 780 off a board and puts a 780 Ti on it though. That was pretty cool. Like, I didn't know, I mean, I guess it makes sense, but that's a hell of a lot of work, manual work. Uh, Let's see. Dragon Tech Gaming says, when do you expect for the latest graphics cards to be in stock with stable flow of production? <laughs> uh, it, when do I expect them to be in stock is basically every couple days or every week. But a stable production, and uh, sta well, so I guess we can break it down a few ways. Technically, <laughs> technically they come in stock. They just don't stay. And then technically there's stable production. But the, the real the heart of your question is when do you think they'll be in stock constantly or readily? And the answer is probably not for a long time. It, I think AMD was saying they expect to have issues with CPUs and three CPU production past uh, middle of the year, past June or July, until the console stuff slows down, which gives you an, a look into graphics cards as well. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I would think like end of year or something. Uh, Weeds32, love the hair. Do you use two-in-one shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> what? And they're nagging you. <laughs> no, I, I start with uh, thermal paste, and then I use leave-in liquid metal. VC Jester, Steve, can I talk you into changing your name to Patrick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, how do you know that's not actually my, maybe this is just a, an, uh, like a pseudonym. Maybe that is my name. Paul M. Surely we see how this case is modeled after a toilet. You know, 
There have been a lot of comments about how it looks like a toilet. Maybe one of the like Taiwanese. Uh, yeah, it does. It does actually look like the <laughs> ones in like the hotel rooms in Taiwan. Uh, when is part two of Ram's video series coming out? I don't know if that was asked as a joke or not, but we did actually get uh, other Patrick, uh, Patrick Stone, working on that recently. So uh, hopefully make progress on that. Let's see. We don't have too many more of these. I want to read them all though. Uh, Patrick G said, just wanted to thank you for the content. I'm enjoying my mouse mat. Thanks. Well, thank you for buying it. Uh, we are the ones who need to be thanking you. Ish is Shin Ryu Kid says, is it worth upgrading from a 3600 to a 5600X since I have a 3070? I'm using an Asus Prime B550 board. Huh. Um, it'll it would give you a bit more performance in 1080p gaming. If you're playing at like 4K or 1440, the uplift would not be substantial. So personally, I wouldn't upgrade from a 3600 to a 5600X. It, it is a good jump, but I think waiting a generation here is worthwhile. You're saying Andrew needs to upgrade his personal system. Andrew, though, needs <laughs> to upgrade, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, who has the best computer out of all of us at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, what if, what if someone else builds a new system and theirs is better than yours? Uh, I'll get that. <laughs> he said, I'll get that. <laughs> it's like a threat. <laughs> Start paying Andrew protection money. Uh, Craig Newcomb said, are there any updates to the GM case? Uh, talked about that in, in a lot of detail earlier, so I'll leave that to the earlier part of this video. Uh, Patrick Hobespian said, you guys are cool, I'll take my money, $10. You're really That's like getting all the Patricks to donate. <laughs> yeah. to <this> yeah. <laughs> like, it's like reverse reverse robbing. You're not, <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Um, I wish I had a question I could answer or something, but we appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, Shu, you can said, which component is generating the heat for liftoff? All of them. Uh, so we can talk about that. We were originally going to do this cooler because Patrick had, I don't know if you remember which ones you were looking at, but tried fitting a couple mm -hmm. small coolers in so there. It's basically all of our tower coolers. Uh, I cycled through a lot of them. Okay. Um, so none of them really fit. And we were going to do this, uh, but it's downdraft. And the fans in the back of this case are both exhaust. And so getting that small tower in there from Arctic, I, I think, is a better flow path. Yeah, we'd also looked at this um, big shuriken. Uh, Literally the name, by the way. <laughs> but the clearance isn't great for the um, rear I.O. And this is one of those boards that has like a built-in I.O. cover. And the fin stack is oriented so that it wouldn't necessarily exhaust out the back. Um, I think that's how it was set up. So the AMD stock cooler is for, I mean, it's a stock cooler, but it fits in a lot of cases yeah. and in a lot of situations. And uh, their new ones are genuinely not bad. Like, I would still, it, it's still fairly high on my list of things to upgrade, depending on the budget for the build. But it's not like the old coolers where it was like, you got to get this thing out of here. You know, like these are actually, you can use them and be OK. I think they also don't ship them with a lot of the higher end CPUs. No, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's shipping with it, there's a good chance that stock, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan said, go into Afterburner and set the fans to 100% for vertical lift off. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, you could probably stand it on its back. <laughs> we, I guess, we can break our rule and just try to push the power button. And if it doesn't turn on, we'll fix it later. But Okay. There's a power cable, I think, on the floor back there. Uh, someone wanted to see it turned on. And then we'll do a, um, a review of this thing later, too. Uh, Monstrosity said, just bought a mouse mat the other day. Throw a SATA cable in there. <laughs> we'll figure out what to do with those cables one way or another. Uh, Brian Heuser said, thanks for continuing to make interesting content. Thank you, Brian. Timothy Gregg said, Patrick, have you played the game Valheim? Do you have any thoughts on the game, if so? I have not. Um, Steve actually mentioned it to me, which is rare. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm normally the one that's like 
watching the the game news, but uh, no, I had never heard of it. And then Penny Arcade did two comics in a row on it, oh, so I, day, I guess right? it, I guess it must be a big deal now. Rock um, Paper Shotgun's been running a lot of pieces on Valheim. And they the Rock Paper Shotgun, by the way, for people watching, if if you need like a fun gaming coverage outlet, they do a good job. I like their uh, I like their stuff, and I like a lot of Ars Technica stuff. So it did turn on. I see the RAM is glowing. Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, it's the cigarette set logo. Cool. Which you can't see because the lights are on. But do we have enough room here, Slack, to rotate it? Oh yeah, yeah. There's plenty of Slack. Let's try and get it on the grid. It shows up okay. Is that visible at all, Andrew? <laughs> A little bit. If we'd have to turn the lights off to really see that, but that's not bad, I guess. I don't know how hard it would be to make your own. <sighs> Someone says, currently playing Valheim. Thermal's going to be shite, I reckon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, you're definitely right. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. It smells like uh, fresh plastic. Yeah. That's, as long as it doesn't say, it doesn't smell like fire, I guess. <laughs> yeah, these... Uh, I don't feel a ton of air coming out of these yeah. semi-decorative vents. <laughs> In theory, you might feel a little, yeah, there's a little bit of movement down there from that EK fan. Not a lot of air from those 80 mils, though. Yeah, I've been playing um, more Animal Crossing than any oh, of yeah. the past <laughs> couple of days. Uh, let's see. Alan Leslie said, would love to see a piece on Boink or folding at home on new GPUs. We do have a good content piece that was written a while ago on it, and then it uh, stagnated. Like, we, we held, got into a holding pattern on it, waiting for Q&A stuff, and I don't know. I may try and run that piece. Yegor Matseka, 99 tenths, no message. Thank you. Uh, Loop Run Bunker says, sign each SATA cable, then they'll sell. I don't even want to sell them. I just want to get them not here. Just want to get rid of them. We've stopped taking them out of motherboard boxes sometimes because we don't have anywhere to put them. Uh, Mustangs by Matt. Tuned in late. I was filming a turbo swap on a 2020 EcoBoost Mustang. Coming to YouTube soon. Shameless plug. <laughs> any uh, That's in the message. It says shameless plug. Uh, any updates on the side of the road, Mac? Not yet. I need. I mean, at some point, I gotta watch it. It's uh, it's hard to get to that stuff once we get that far away. Uh, Daniel Chale says things are a bit tight this month. Else, I'd have bought a toolkit. Have some free Google money. Five dollars. Thank you. I guess I don't know if they're still doing the free super chats, but thank you nonetheless uh, to Google, to you, or both. Uh, Paul Delaney said, "Yeah, it looks like a shuttlecraft from TNG. Put some paper towel tubes on the side, and you got the the warp." Uh, nacelles, I guess. Not sure on the pronunciation. Steve, it looks like a space toilet. Well, I mean, that's better than what people were saying earlier, which was just a toilet. So I guess a space toilet is an upgrade. We're almost to the bottom of these super chats, and then we'll start. We'll do one last look over and close it out. Uh, Mr. Temper Tantrum said, I guess AMD means aerospace micro devices now. It's nice, but needs some modding. Send it to Jay. I think modding. I think a paint job would be pretty cool. Um, oh, is that the light I just saw? The flashlight? Uh, yeah, I was just trying to shine something on the back. It, there's a pattern of uh, hexagons and stuff here that if you had LEDs in there, right. it would light up, but there it, aren't LEDs in if there. If you got one of those older laser, those like five point laser bulbs that were really bright for case modding in the day, mm -hmm. that'd be kind of cool to shove on the floor and shine it up if you can diffuse it. That's what Jay can do. We can just send it to him, and he can put an LED in it, and then send it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there? I guess there's not really anywhere we can shove something. The hand light might fit. We'd have to open the case again. It would fit, yeah, if you want to try it, but I don't know. Uh, I guess it, Patrick can try and shove it in there while I'm reading the rest of these, if you want to grab him one. Um, let's see where I stop. Dr. Respectful says, also work at Dell. Super impressed. Not sure if that's about this or uh, 
the working at Dell. But yeah, I was at the um, uh, Palmer South 3, I think is the campus that I was at back in the day. It was fun. I liked working there. They, uh, they had some pretty cool like lab facilities and stuff like that. Uh, it took many years for me to kind of really appreciate how advanced that facility is. Uh, Deep Fried Lettuce says, I recommend ZS cases for ITX. Global website too. I will look into that. That's referring to the earlier comment about where to get ITX cases. Uh, Lawrence Manessis, 299, no, no message, thank you. Grizz God Productions says, how is the Rosewell Cullinan case building first PC? I actually did a review on that a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know if you were involved in that one, Patrick. I I remember working on it a lot though. I um, was here. I don't know. I don't think I reviewed it or was involved in the review. Yeah. So the the Cullinan was good when we reviewed it. What are you saying, Andrew? Put it inside, like this. Just like there. Yeah. Well, yep, this is case modding. <laughs> so it works. Yeah, I like how you can still see the individual bulbs on the hand <laughs> light. That's just the mark of quality. That's cool, though. I think if you got like a more diffused uh, light source, that would look pretty sweet. The world's brightest LED fan. Okay. Yeah. Was Buzz Light you're included with the case? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, Dr. Respectful says, yeah, we worked around there similar times. Cool. Well, that was right when uh, I was in the Biz Client Lab, if that uh, if you, you remember that, right when the consumer lab was getting stripped down for the Alienware acquisition. Uh, let's see, got those. In the hot water, said, oh, we're in the last few, it looks like, last part of the scrolling down, which is good because the scroll wheel is broken. In the hot water, said, shout out to Phil's Computer Lab Retro PC YouTube channel. Okay, <laughs> here's a shout out, I guess. Uh, Dennis, too, $20 Canadian, no message, thank you. Purple says, uh, did you see PNY's 3060 went from 629 to $500? That's interesting. Uh, I don't know if that's whose mistake that is. I don't know if it's probably the retailer's mistake, but I'm not sure the details. Toaster chicken. Uh, that's, I'm not sure if I would make chicken in a toaster, but says, think there will be like a G skew 3080G that has the 3060 anti-crypto added to it once the crypto cards are out? That's a good question. I'm not sure. So the anti-crypto stuff is um, done in firmware and drivers and uh, could technically be added at a later date without new cards, but I'm not sure what their plans are. Uh, Epin Crap B10 Games says, Steve, video idea, a complete water cooling build filled with liquid metal. Send that to Linus. I think he, he would try to figure that would be so expensive. <laughs> that is so much liquid You're metal. You're acting like he hasn't already tried that. No, I'm <laughs> sure they have. Uh, Dennis Perry, I've got a 10-year-old Corsair AX1200. It holds 12.1 volts when drawing 1,000 plus watts. Uh, old modded 2x7970s crossfire from, uh, oh, from, the, okay, from the UPS. But should I replace it with a new one for my 3090, 3900X system? That's a lot of hard drives, eight hard drives. They do take a lot of power. Uh, I, I think, what is it, 1,200 watts? I think you'll be okay at 1,200. It might be a little, I think you'll be okay. I'd have to, I'm not sure what hard drives draw anymore. I, it's been so long since I've looked. But from the CPU and the GPU standpoint, you're fine. Uh, last four, Christopher Foster says, my God, what have I walked into? What do you mean? The future. The future. <laughs> this is case design. <laughs> this is this is what it's going to be. Uh, Jeremy Pruitt says, reminds me of a plastic toilet. Um, uh, somehow, no disrespect. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it. It doesn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Ike44, hi, say hello from Mars. And the last one, Jacob Sellers, upgrade my 1700X or wait for DDR5. I don't think I would base my purchasing decisions on the next RAM iteration. Uh, especially because when it launches, it's, it's normally not super exciting. But the reason to upgrade your 1700X would just be if you're unhappy with your system's performance right now. And if you feel like it's still doing everything you need, and the only reason you're thinking about an upgrade is maybe because you're, you're just bored with it, then I would say hold on to it, uh, unless you just want to do it for fun as, as you know, something to do on the weekend. But from a performance perspective, the only reason to really upgrade is if you are 
uh, getting like a lot of stutters in games or like your production capabilities are hindered or something like that. Um, okay, so that is all those. Thanks to everyone who uh, who watched this monstrosity get built. It was fun, fun working on, and I'm looking forward to doing the full review on it too. It's kind of an interesting case. Yeah, uh, it's different. It, it might not completely kill the parts if we <laughs> run a thermal yeah. benchmark on it. Yeah, I think I think that cooler is going to help a lot. But uh, I see you've left it not completely sealed. Because well, yeah, because I have to get the light back out. Yeah, but also because, uh, so I said this at the very beginning of the stream, but we we're a little bit worried about the, the alligator clips mm. and them breaking over time, so that's probably the biggest complaint right yeah, now. Yeah, they, um, they broke Yeah. over time. <laughs> How many? Just one? Or? Just the one. Okay. I, it wasn't, I think it was like misaligned slightly. Yeah, I think and so. They're pretty fragile. Yeah. It's weird though. I, this is on the bright white setting for the LEDs, mm. but it turns yellow. Though. Yeah, the cover's turning it yellow. Huh. Interesting. It's like a. It's a filter. Those rear fans were plugged into Molex, by the way. Okay. When I was on earlier, and so they you couldn't even power. hear them. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking they are. These are, 12 volt, 0 0.08 amp Ooh. fans. Uh, so not yeah. Delta fans. No, I couldn't really feel that air coming out either. So, mm -hmm. um, cool. Well, I think that covers it. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn off the the um, signed mouse mat skew in a couple minutes. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a hard cutoff time, I guess, just so that everyone knows. Let's give it like, let's say about 10 minutes from now, I'm gonna turn that skew off. So if you wanna grab a mouse mat, store.gamersnexus.net, we'll both sign it if it's bought in the next 10 minutes or earlier in the stream. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna turn that off and, uh, and that'll be it for that one for now. But if you catch another pop-up stream in the future, we'll do stuff like this again. And I think this was a fun build. Some background for people watching. We were kind of looking at like, what's streamable right now? We normally stream overclocking, but I wasn't really feeling it with the GPU availability, and I don't think many of the viewers were either. So, I mean, I just this seemed fun to me. It's just like doing, not a just not a computer build or PC build, but just like a weird build. Yeah. Uh, so it's still still something fun, PC related, and and uh, not focused on GPU inventory this way. So hopefully uh, everyone liked it. But we'll we'll do more of these in the future soon as well because we have more cool stuff coming in. So. Yeah, thanks for making the stream fun, and uh, and for all the comments, I'm looking forward to the comment section below debating which Star Trek series this has come out of. But that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. We will see you all next time.